everyone for coming today as we talk about a better way to manage your course catalog. My name is Sarah Crane and I'm the student product manager here at Kowali and today I'm joined by Sean Warren, our Kowali student implementation manager, as, where, as well as Mary Higgins, Rumki Constant, and Carrie Morrell from Southern New Hampshire University who are each involved in creating and managing their university's catalog. I'm going to start by giving a brief introduction to Kowali, then Sean will give us a short demo, and then we'll hear from our panelists. They'll talk about how they're managing their catalogs, and yes, that's a spoiler alert, they manage multiple catalogs each semester, one for each of Southern New Hampshire's university's unique educational offerings. We're the product of an international community of educational institutions and organizations committed to improving higher education with a combination of software solutions and best practices. Um, our software was and continues to be designed in collaboration with some of the world's leading colleges and universities. And these are a few of our current customers and partners. Our goal is to help colleges and universities simplify processes, eliminate chaos, and showcase the very best they have to offer. So Kowali Student currently includes both curriculum management and catalog management. The idea is that you create and manage your curricular information in curriculum management, then it's automatically converted into clean, well-designed catalogs ready for print or digital use with catalog. Uh, because these solutions work hand in hand, you can ensure that your catalog information is accurate, consistent, and it's really easy to keep up to date. Now we're going to turn the time over to Sean Warren, our implementation manager for Kowali Student, and he'll do a quick demo of Catalog. Okay, so what we're looking at here, again, I want to thank everyone for taking time today. What we're looking at here is um, the output that our Catalog product provides. And um, we'll soon see when our friends from Southern New Hampshire University uh, demonstrate their catalogs you'll see what it looks like when they've wrapped their unique skin around our output and so that it looks like their other web pages. But I wanted to start here so that we could see sort of an endpoint of after you've done all of your configuration and created all of your content, what the output looks like, and then I'll, back, I'll work backwards and show you kind of how we got here. And I'm gonna hopefully do that in just a few minutes. So again, this is the output that you see. We'll see a prettier version that skins shortly. The question is, how did we get here? Um, it's, there's a combination of, of two types of content that we manage in the catalog. The catalog manages your, your narrative content in the catalog, your letter from the president, your policies, directory, campus maps, all of that, all those pages that you have in your catalog, all that information that is not the curriculum. That's um, one of the types of curriculum that you manage with the catalog product. The other type of, 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 of content that, that is being managed between curriculum management and catalog is your curricular content. So again, yours, there's two pieces of content that are managed here. Most of the actual work in terms of getting your catalog to display is really about creating all of that non-curricular content because the curricular content is coming directly in, in real time from the curriculum management product. And there's a way that we can load information into, into the curriculum management product so that we can render your catalog even if you're not a user of the curriculum management product. So what we're looking at here is just, as you can see, we're looking at a list of degrees and programs. And I'll just talk about some of the features that we have real briefly because you're gonna see a lot more of the detail in the function of the catalog um, when our colleagues from Southern New Hampshire University take over. But real briefly, I just wanna give you some context. We're looking at uh, degrees and programs. What, the most important thing that I can tell you about what you're looking at now is everything you see here is completely configurable. The layout of the left navigation, what what's there, how many different items are there, what they're called, that's 100% up to each institution to make those decisions. This content here, this is the content that's coming from curriculum management, and these are, this of course is your curricular content, and things like letters from the president is your non-curricular content that we actually build in the catalog product. 
Now, policies are something that come from curriculum management. That is something that, that is based on fields on a, a form. And of course, that form is something that's completely configurable. And that form also has a workflow. So these policies can be versioned year after year. And you can always go back and look at old versions. Uh, departments are something that are uh, typically defined in curriculum management. And again, all of that content's being pulled directly over and in, in sync, in complete sync with the catalog product. Of course, we have courses and then other non-curricular content that we'll build in catalog. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like um, in terms of the configuration process. And I'll do it pretty quickly. Fortunately, it actually is quite easy. One last item that you see in the UI here is called the addenda. And I'm sure you'll hear more detail about it. But the addenda is the system dynamically publishes anything that's changed in an approved record after the catalog has been published. So this is really a fantastic way to understand those few things that may have changed since the catalog was published. So now let's take a look at what it, it takes to configure this product. And again, it's quite simple. So the, the curricular content is being pulled in dynamically from curriculum management. And it's very simple to get the system to behave the way you want and, and show the way you want because you're able to make all of these decisions um, on your own. There is no, no set schema that you have to fall into. So we can decide based on information on the form whether you want to use a specific date that you put um, in any of your records or you just want to use the dates that represent the starts of your term. So that's one of those configuration options you have. Of course, you're going to have a title. You can rename the things that you, the items that you have in curriculum management, you may only call those things programs, but in your catalog, you'd prefer to call those degrees and programs. So again, you can rename things to make it um, germane to, to the language that you use on your campuses. Now, what we do here, this is where we're, we're creating the template for what your pages are going to look like in your catalog for your curricular content. And it's, this is all super simple to use. It's drag and drop. All we're doing here is we're selecting data, we're selecting the fields of data that you want to be displayed in your catalog. And you're not by any means compelled to show all of the information that you would see in the curriculum management system. But you can, of course, you can pick and choose whatever the relevant fields you want to display in your catalog. And again, if I pick something here, it's made available in the list. And if I want to move it somewhere in, the, in terms of the layout of the page, I can drag and drop and move any of those items wherever I would like. You, of course, can remove things that you don't need. And you can rename them. So this here, this selection here, those are the few fields from the course form in curriculum management that I want to be displayed in the catalog. I do exactly the same process for degrees and programs. I select the fields that I care about. I do the same with specializations. And I also can organize my policies based on the policy type if I choose. I also am able to configure the language or the words, the labels that are used in, in the addenda if the default words are not the ones that make sense for your institution. And then we also have some ability to customize the header and footer of your pages. All right, so that's all it really takes to get the content, the template set up to, for, the, for the way that your actual, your actual curricular pages will, will look. And that's really all the, the time it takes to configure that piece of the software. The next big piece of, of the catalog is all that non-curricular content. And we organize that in what we call content items and content sets. So a content item is very simply a single web page. And it, if you can use Microsoft Word, then you can build these content items. Again, the, it's, you have rich text ability to put in different colors and fonts and different sizes. You're able to insert tables if you choose. You can drag and drop images here. Again, it's very much like using Word. If you know how to use Microsoft Word, you'll have no trouble. And literally, it takes no training to know how to create these content items. So once you've created, this is one example of a content item for the accounting department. And you can see if I go back to my list that I have all these various different pages related to departments and colleges, campus map, and other information that we would typically have in the catalog. So each of these are a discrete page and a content item. 
once you've created all of your items, then you organize your items into sets. So we can see administration is made up of two content items and so on and so forth. And all the departments are organized in this area. And again, you just select from the list of your content items, the correct things. And once you've selected them, then you can move them to whatever order you'd like um, through drag and drop. So now we've got content items, we've organized them into sets. And all we need to do now is to tell the system exactly how we want things to be um, laid out on the page. And so now that we've selected, we've created items, we've organized them into sets, and now we organize those sets. So the left-hand navigation in our actual catalog looks the way we want it to look. And again, this is all drag and drop. Now I'm done. I've got all of my content here. If I wanted to add um, a link in the left navigation to an external page, I could do that as well with the link here. If I wanted to link to some other entity with a different URL and make it part of the navigation, I could easily do that. So we've, we've, we've set up the page um, in the way that we'd like. We've, we've indicated what we want as the home um, page. We've indicated for the PDF uh, cover for when we download a PDF. We, we've identified what we want that to look like. Again, we're choosing from our content items. And at this point now, we've pretty much organized the layout of the catalog. And once we go to the public catalog, which we go here, it's going to take all those content items that you organized in the order that you put them. And it's going to pull in your policies, your courses, your specializations, and your programs from curriculum management. And this is the way it lays out. Now, in terms of navigation, I'll give you a very brief um, run through of navigation. We provide various different ways for users to find what they're looking for. And people, you know, think differently. Some people like to use the search screen. You can do that. If I, if I just type in, put in some words there, I can find my record. I'm looking for this record here. If I wanted to go a different route, if I like using filters, I could do that as well. And some people just like to scroll. So in this case, I just want to look for Bachelor of Science. I've tagged this particular rec record as a Bachelor of Science program. I can look at its specialization as well. And again, these are the fields that I've chosen to display in my catalog. You may choose to do different fields, but that's completely up to you. Beyond that, um, I think we've talked about briefly what it takes to create the content in your catalog, how to lay out the pay, your pages in the catalog from the fields in curriculum management so that you're displaying the content from the actual forms that you're using to approve all of your curriculum. And we've shown you a little bit how one might use it in terms of navigating and finding records. So I'd like to wrap up my very brief demo of curriculum management and allow everyone to take a look and listen to an institution, a couple of folks from Southern New Hampshire University, they're going to talk about how they're actually using this catalog and, and putting it in front of all of their constituents and the decisions they've made during the implement, implementation process to satisfy their business needs. And with that, I will hand things over. Okay, thank you, Sean. Um, great information and if anyone has any questions just a reminder feel free to put them in the questions box we'd love to answer any specifics you have or if you'd like us to reach out to you to schedule an individual demo we're happy to do that too so now we'd like to turn the time uh, back over to our guests from southern new hampshire university we are so pleased to have with us mary higgins uh room key constant and carrie morell they have so kindly uh, consented to show us all of what they have done at SNHU. So take it away. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, hello, all. This is Mary Higgins. Um, we're very glad to join you today and just share a bit about our uh, curriculum and our catalog management uh, experience. Um, to give you some background about Southern New Hampshire University, uh, we're located in Manchester, New Hampshire, and we have multiple colleges. Um, as you uh, may have been able to see on your screen, the cover page um, for three of our uh, catalogs representing each of our colleges. Um, so we have um, our university college. That's the more traditional one. It offers 
undergraduate, graduate, doctorate degrees to students seeking a campus experience. And we have a catalog to support, to support its programs. Um, our SNHU Online College, and that offers undergraduate and graduate online degrees to students uh, located across the country, approximately uh, 90,000 online students currently. Um, and then additionally, we have um, a college that where we partner with large employers um, to offer competency-based undergraduate programs for working adults. Um, and so, and then also we have a college for um, engineering, technology, and aeronautics. And so we have multiple colleges, but um, across SNHU, we're one university and we have one registrar's office that serves all of the colleges and we share programs and courses across our colleges. Um, and when we do share the programs and courses, they're designed to meet the same program outcomes across the colleges. So we're using the curriculum management system um, in, to support those efforts. Um, prior to using Quali, our curriculum management system basically was a SharePoint site. Um, with limited workflow capabilities. Um, so our academic deans were basically um, logging into SharePoint. They could see a series of PDF files. And as you can imagine, it was um, difficult to track revisions and find the information that they were looking for. Um, and so that's why we decided to um, invest in the curriculum management system. Um, also at that time, we had a third party catalog system um, which required an awful lot of manual re-entry of curriculum changes as they're approved and very intensive reviews and editing of our programs and courses, particularly in the springtime. Um, so as we were growing, we really needed a, a better solution. Um, so we've been working with Kuali since um, the fall of 2015. Um, uh, we brought up all our colleges onto the curriculum management system through two, 2016, and we were able to publish our first catalogs in 2017 in June. Um, if you go to our website, www.snhu.edu slash catalog, you'll be able to take a look at our um, catalogs live in real time. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Carrie. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Mary, for that introduction. I'm excited to be here today um, to share with you all the Southern New Hampshire University academic catalogs and review with you some of the benefits that we have gained by utilizing Quali for both our curriculum and catalog management. As Mary mentioned, we began our, began our um, review of vendors with an exha exhaustive list that our previous system had fallen short of meeting, resulting in numerous inefficiencies and manual processes that worked in conjunction with one another, causing us to fall short in our goal of providing our students with the world-class experience they have come to expect from a university with an international presence. So with that said, we began our work with Quality to develop and design our catalog management system. We are aware that it would need to be an all hands on deck effort on our end, requiring the input of multiple teams and individuals. The most important of these, of course, was our students whose input we regularly sought in an effort to ensure that the catalog was not only an improvement for us as the administrators, but also um, would meet or exceed their needs as the primary audience. Kuali played a key role in assisting us in meeting that goal because they were flexible, adaptable, and responsive to our unique structure and needs. They took the time to listen and truly understand what it is that we were seeking, and as a result, were able to interpret our requests by developing the solutions that would enable us to meet those needs. One great example of this is the overall look and feel of our catalog and how it appears on our website. From the onset of this project, we were very clear in our expectations that our catalog would need to be a, would need to appear native to our existing website, meaning that it would need to align with our branding standards. As a result, Quali was able to take that input and in turn develop the custom theme setting within our catalog products so that we would be able to designate the fonts and colors that would enable us to meet that goal. And that is the site that you're looking at now. They're, they were also adaptable in that they were willing to work to improve items in areas that may not have been a large focus of the original product. An example of this is the extensive development and testing they conducted, con, conducted in conjunction with our online accessibility center to ensure that our web catalog meets ADA compliance standards and is compatible with most screen reader software. Overall, Quali has been responsive to our needs throughout the project and continues to be to this day, being sure to prioritize our troubleshooting requests or additional development needs in a timely manner. I'd now like to take actually some time to walk you all through the catalog, um, being sure to highlight some of the features which were the most impactful for us, both as the administrators as well as our students. So I'm gonna start and just kind of talk briefly about this homepage here. Um, so what you're looking at here, this is our cover page. 
Um, this is something that we had worked with our marketing team to develop. We wanted something that would look not only great on the web, but also would duplicate purposes as the cover page for our PDF version of our print catalog. Um, this is some flexibility that we actually did not have um, with the previous software that we were utilizing to publish our catalogs. This, of course, now meets our branding standards, which was a win. Um, and we'll talk more about the PDF a little bit later. The next set I wanted to talk about was our content set located under our welcome tab here. So this includes kind of our overarching information as Sean had referenced. So we talk about, you know, we have our message from our president, our directory, et cetera. This is where we house those content items in this one content set. So what's great about this is, as Sean mentioned, we are able to reorder these to appear in whatever order we prefer. And that has been helpful because we have moved things around or, or added or changed things as well. So that's been great to have that flexibility. The next piece is the policies. So for us, we found it was helpful to divide our policies by section headers. So as you see here, we start out with about to and work our way down through academic calendars and missions, et cetera. That is something that we are not necessarily, um, you don't necessarily need to do. If you choose, you want to, to instead just simply list all your policies as one list, you can do that. Um, but you can also assign section headers if applicable, which is what we have cho chosen to do here. Um, the other part is, is that again, the search features in here are great. We are able to actually search for whatever policy we're looking for and we're approaching quickly commencement season. So I'm sure, sure students are gonna be looking for our honors policy. So I'm gonna open that up so you can kind of take a look and see what the policy actually looks like on our page. So for example, this is our ceremonial Latin honors policy. And in here, um, and I brought this policy up for a certain reason, but I wanted to just kind of show you a couple things quickly with this policy. We do have the option to create tables within policies, which is important to note for those of you that do house tables within your policy content. And then you also have the option, some of these policies are longer than others. We have this button down here that actually redirects you right back to the top of the page. Um, so there's a lot less scrolling than you might have experienced previously. So that's just a quick glance at our policies for right now. And what's good about this is actually when you search for policies, it is done via progressive search. So when you type in honors, for example, it's going to look at the titles and then it's gonna search actually the content of the policy. So students that may be looking for something that's not necessarily included in the title of the policy, that should come up in their search for that information. The next piece I'm gonna talk about is programs. So we've chosen to divide our program listings um, by school. Um, so you can search for whatever program you're looking for. Um, so let's type in accounting, for example. You'll be presented with any programs that include counting, um, excuse me, accounting, and open those programs up to do um, a deeper look. One of the great things that we have really enjoyed is, again, something that Sean had mentioned, but the ability to really rename these fields as needed. So for example, if we wanted to name this top fields here, program description instead of description, we would have the flexibility to do so within our catalog settings. We're also able to designate in which order we would like that information to appear. So if we wanted to, for example, move the outcomes to appear below requirements, we would have the flexibility to do so. And that change would be global. So we wouldn't need to do it um, you know, at the individual program level. We could do that in the settings and it would appear across the catalog. One other thing that's important to note is in our previous catalog software, we didn't have the flexibility to link to the general ed program. We actually had a link here, but it would open up into a PDF version of our general education program, which was then a table. We now have our general education program appearing just like any other program with active links to courses within it, which is very helpful for students that are looking to um, you know, review their degree path. And then the other piece as we scroll through the requirements for this program is the concentration. So any program that includes a concentration, that would be listed at the bottom here and you would expand this menu to view what the courses, course requirements are for that. Um, we thought that was really handy, um, definitely for students that are looking to maybe kind of specialize um, their studies in a certain area. So that's just a quick look at um, the program and then of course you can go right back to viewing the program listings um, with the back button here. And then we can clear this out. One other thing I wanted to talk about um, was the filter here that we have over on the side. Um, so you're actually able to filter by program. This actually, this filtering capability we had chosen to do 
by degree type. And that was important for us because we wanted, to, we have a lot of students that would like to add on different um, degrees of study. So for example, students that wanna add a minor, they're able to do that at a glance and see exactly what minors we have to offer across the university. So if they are maybe a business major and wanna you know, have a minor in a different um, area, they're able to view those all right as a, at a glance. Same for our certificates or any other degree program, which we really enjoy. And again, that was a direct um, results from student feedback that we had received. And I think that's about it for programs that I wanted to mention. And then I'm gonna move on to courses. So here, working our way down the left-hand navigation, we're going into courses. So our courses, we um, have chosen to organize by course subject. Again, instead of an exhaustive list, this is how we've chosen to organize them. So we have, um, included different fields for our courses. So like I'll just show you the expanded menu here. One important thing that I think is um, interesting for you to know is that this little button here, we had students that actually wanted to kind of go back and forth if they were solely looking to enroll in say an accounting course, they wanted to kind of isolate that section of the course listings and be able to go back and forth between that section. So for example, if I select this ACC 201 course, I wanna go back and just view the accounting courses. So by expanding that menu from the, the, the complete course list and bringing yourself into the just the accounting courses, you're actually able to go back and forth and just continue to view the accounting courses at a glance, which we think was really helpful. And going back to the course listing, so we have, um, so ADV, let's talk about this, um, let's go into advertising and talk about ADV 263. So we'll open that up in a new tab here. So for our courses, we've, we've kept it pretty simple. Um, we list the course name, of course, and the number, the description and credits. The only additional field that we include in our courses, and again, this is completely customizable. So whatever fields you wanna pull from your curriculum management system to appear in catalog at the course program, policy level, et cetera, those you can select in part, as part of the catalog settings. And again, you can rename them as well. So we've chosen to include description and credits. And then for our undergraduate um, university campus students, we also include um, the detailed description. So for example, that would include whether or not the course is being offered, you know, fall term only, spring, every other spring, et cetera. So students were able to kind of um, adjust their schedules accordingly based on when the course was actually being offered. Um, and then, of course, like I said, you can customize these fields. So um, if you wanted to include additional information here based on what you've entered in your curriculum management system, you can include things such as contact hours, the option to audit the course, the department, the grading type, pass fail, letter grade, et cetera. Um, and again, all of that can be renamed within the catalog um, settings. All right. I think that's all I wanted to do to talk about courses. Um, and then the next piece I'm going to talk about, let's go and just take a peek at our UC catalog for our university college. This is for our campus students and give you a peek about that. We have our addenda. So the addenda has been a really huge lift for us. We have been able to really effectively nail down um, exactly what changes, updates, et cetera, have occurred within our curriculum um, and, and policies really between when we publish the catalog and our next publication. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So you can see here we have different types of changes. So these items have been updated. This item here is new. And then we also have the option to view items that have that are now inactive or no longer being offered. So one thing that's important to note, again, just back to the customization piece, we were able to actually rename this field um, you know, natively was retired. We actually changed that to be listed as inactive. So that was just a customization that we made on our end, which made more sense to us than the other term. But let's take a look at one of these. So I'm gonna expand this ENB 100 course, Introduction to Sustainability. You'll see here that there was actually two different items that were updated within this course, both the description and our additional information field. So for this course, we updated that description. And then here we changed this to, instead of saying it was only offered every fall term and every even spring term, we are now saying that it's basically offered at any time. So we removed that piece. So that's just a quick update on what that would look like. But let's take a look also at what that looks like on the course level, which I think is um, helpful. So let's go back to our course listing and type in that course, so ENB 100. And let's open that up. 
So you see the course here appears as any other course would. But here we have the same addenda we would review at the addenda level. So at the course level, it's going to actually match exactly what you've seen in, with the full addenda. So as changes happen to courses, these will um, fill in with a list of all the changes that have happened um, with that course. So you're able to kind of view the progression of that course over that academic year. Again, we really enjoyed this feature. This has been um, really great for us, and especially you know the filtering option to be able to view what what's new, what's updated, and then of course you have um, you know the ability to kind of like look into what changes um, you know the new and the old, which has been great. And this was previously a manual process entirely for us, where we would have to actually enter those changes every time they occurred um, manually. So again, a huge lift for us. Okay. So um, I think the next thing I wanted to talk about was just the archive catalog. So this is really just a link that we've added. We maintain archive PDF copies of all of our um, university catalogs for all of our units. So those are actually stored within our academic archive, but we wanted the ability for people to be able to access them directly from our catalog. So we simply just added a link bringing um, viewers over to the academic archive directly. So that's all I really had to say about that one. Um, so I know I promised to talk about the PDF version of the catalog earlier. Um, so this, I would have to say, was by far one of the biggest improvements we've experienced to date as a result of the use of our quality catalog software. So for any of you that actually do both an online and print version of the catalog, this is really important because I'm sure that you're kind of familiar with you know, what is actually entailed with um, creating a PDF catalog. Um, for us, um, creation of the annual PDF publication was extremely time consuming as we were forced to manually draft this document in its, entire, in, in its entirety, um, which involved cutting and pasting policies, manually exporting and then sorting our programs and courses to ensure that they would appear in the appropriate catalog and not to mention the work done to update our additional content. Um, so now this process, formally consisting of multiple weeks of manual work, now happens in under a minute. Simple push of a button, download the catalog, and it's created exactly in the order in which you have designated. So that allows our university to continually operate without any of the blackout dates for the content updates for curriculum and policy changes that we'd be required to implement as a result of the time it, it required to create the PDF. So previously, we would have to actually shut down any option for anyone to make changes to catalog um, for at least a month prior to the publication of the catalog. So we would actually have time to put those individual pieces together. That now takes that piece completely out of the picture. So now we were able to actually enter items into our curriculum management system, assign dates for which we want them to appear in catalog and know they'll be there. We no longer have to track things down or lock things out because we need to take the time to actually create the PDF. So this is a huge lift for us. And of course, we also don't have to worry about the additional headaches of manually inserting headers and footers, creating table contents or numbering pages. Those pieces are all taken care of for you. So overall, I would say our biggest takeaways is from this project and the biggest lifts for us here at SNHU was the fact that there's no more manual manipulation from our curriculum management system to our actual published catalog. Programs, courses, and policies appear as they were entered into the system and in according, according to the fields and order and labels entered in catalog settings. So this drastically reduced the chance that we have for any human error that occurs with that manual copying of that information. And of course, I, I think they're probably tied for first, but the creation of the PDF as well. So the creation of the PDF and, and knowing that we don't have to spend our time and energy in actually you know, creating this massive document and just knowing that it's done for us based on the way we've actually outlined the catalog to appear is, has been great. And then the addenda. The addenda, again, because that was another manual process that's been resolved with the implementation of Kuali, I would say that that's definitely one of the top things that we've taken away from this project um, that has really been a great improvement for us here at SNHU. And then with the catalog settings themselves, just knowing that when I make a change to a setting within catalog, whether we want to change the name of a field and how it appears in a catalog, or we want to change a content item, it's great to know that those changes are instantaneous. They'll appear and they'll be global. And then, of course, the ability um, to link to individual content. This is something I didn't mention before, but in our previous catalog, we did not have the ability to link to individual courses or programs. 
um, and to have individual links for those pieces. So now we can link to any specific course, policy, et cetera, with an individual unique link. So that's about it for me for the overview and the walkthrough of the catalog. I'm actually going to bring this back over um, over to Roomkey um, to add some additional notes for everyone. Take it away, Roomkey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. You're welcome. Hi, everyone. So it may be helpful for some of you to know that previously we had two separate curriculum management systems, and the COC and UC catalogs pulled from the two separate CMs. Since many of our curriculum and policies are shared, it was difficult to process them separately, especially when they needed to go through the same workflow. So last year during summer, we worked closely with Quali to combine these separate instances into one. And currently we maintain the separate catalogs, but the data is actually pulled from that one instance based on a field on the forms to indicate which catalog the curriculum or the policy should display. Um, it also may be helpful for if it's, it's really important for any school that's considering to adopt quality CM and catalog system to know that the best approach for a successful implementation is for both teams, quality and the school, to uh, collaborate to get the um, requirements, the features, and testing to ensure accuracy of functionality and the data. As Carrie had previously mentioned, that Quali took the time to listen to our catalog requirements and worked together to find the best solution that works for our needs, which made it really easy for us to collaborate together. So I think that's pretty much all we had to say from Southern New Hampshire University. Now we will pass it off to Quali. Thank you so much, um, Mary Roomke and Carrie. We really appreciate um, all of your insights and taking the time to share with us your experience working with Koali Catalog. Um, we have just a couple of questions. The first question is, how long did the catalog implementation take? Sure, so our catalog implementation from start to finish and, and publication was from January 2016. Um, through June uh, 2017. But okay, keep in mind too that that implementation also included a lot of development on our end where that's now already in place for anyone that might be looking to adopt. Yes, that's right. So for participants to know, we've actually worked really closely with SNHU as we were building this product. So today you would expect to see an implementation schedule probably around the three to six months time frame. Uh, the next question we have is, how do your stakeholders and the users at SNHU like this system versus your old system for managing your catalog? Um, actually, the response both from um, our in internal and external stakeholders has been extremely positive. We received a, actually a lot of unsolicited feedback from our student population, um, just indicating how easy it is for them to locate courses um, and to navigate throughout the catalog. And one important piece, and I don't think I mentioned this previously, was um, the ability to view the catalog in its entirety via mobile device. Um, it's just as easy to view there as it is on an actual um, desktop configure. Perfect. Well, we don't, doesn't look like we have any other questions. Uh, before we conclude, we wanted to provide you all with some contact information for a few people. Um, this is all of those who spoke today. We've also included the information of Paul Hauser. He's our director of customer engagement. Feel free to reach out to him if you want um, a personalized demo, want information about pricing, or any, any additional information about maybe curriculum management. And my information is on there as well. If you have specific questions about um, either curriculum management or catalog, I'm happy to reach out and talk with anyone who's interested.